Welcome back to the UK's Strongest Man 2006 from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Let's turn the clock back once more and look at the highlights from day two's competition. Uh, first of all, it's the flagpoles and uh, Mark Lawson, the only man in his group to lift all five flagpoles. Well, it's one of those that Mark's making it look easy, but it's not. No, these are five flagpoles. Each one gets heavier and longer. So they're very difficult. It's an all-round power event suited for Mark. He does very well in this event. Yes, Mark, the only man in his group to lift all five. An achievement matched by Terry Hollands in his group. They were the only two men to lift all five. In the squat competition, Group A, Simon Morton was the governor here. 280 kilo, as many reps as they can do. And you need a bit of safety there, don't you? Because if, if somebody gets in trouble, you need somebody to take that weight. Yeah, it's an awful lot of weight. And as you can see, they've got to go down an awful long way, which makes it twice as hard. And again, it's all round strength, isn't it? I mean, you've, you've, got to have some, uh, you've got to have some quads to succeed in that event. Yeah, 280 kilo is in excess of 600 pounds. You're looking at a quarter of a ton for as many reps you can do. Eight for Simon Morton. Dale Norris in Group B needed nine to take the lead. We know he doesn't like the grip events, making this one look easy. Dale is built for squatting. He's a big squatter, big legs and he does extremely well in all these kind of competitions. Yes, this was an event that really played to the Welshman's strengths. And there's the nine that he needed. And he took a look and said, that'll do. Thank you very much. Why waste your energy? Well, between events, there was certainly plenty to entertain the crowd. Don't try this at home. These fellas know what they're doing. Well, so they tell us. Well, you need, a, you need a forklift truck to get these things in position. And then these fellas just pick them up and run with them. Terry Hollands in the farmer's walk, walking away with it. 20.56 seconds. 380 kilo, like a bag of shopping. Impressive or what? Terry does it like nobody else can do it. The others have struggled, but Terry completes the course. Right, he took the course and the rest of the competition to the cleaners in the farmer's walk. Simon Flint, a little bit slower in Group B, but 28.43, still another very good time. Yeah, Simon shows how good he is with the grip events. Continues to impress. Now, one of the uh, highlights of day two was Jimmy Mark, who outlasting Glenn Ross in the Crucifix hold, where two power tools are held at arm's length. And this is Glenn Ross's event. But Jimmy Mark, who, look how comfortable he looked throughout this competition. And it was the big Irishman who had to give it up. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. But Jimmy, time. nearly a full 10 seconds longer. That was a surprise. Now, Terry Hollands has made something of a speciality of Conan's torture circle. He was the only man to go round without a break in a time of 23.28 seconds. What on earth is going on in this event? This is a very difficult event. 400 kilo on his shoulders. It wobbles, it moves, it's a very difficult one, but Terry just played with it. I see the uh, Fire Eaters were uh, brought in once again. Mark Lawson, Group B. He had the best time from this group. I take it the fire's just there for decoration, Gary. They don't get thrown into the fire if they fail to uh, complete the course or anything. I think he keeps them moving. Mark's an old-timer, he's done this many, many times. He knows how to pace himself. A good effort from Mark. Yes, yeah, a real highlight from day two for Mark Lawson. Getting the job done. But boy, that hurt. One more drop, one more. They're allowed to put it down for once and then they've got to try again. Lift it up. So he's had his break, effectively. It's amazing that these fellas can just rekindle their momentum after a stop like that. But uh, he's shown some real gutsiness here, wasn't he, Mark? Mark never gives up. He just doesn't know when to stop. 
So this is how the leaderboards were looking after day two, and it was goodbye to Gary McKelvey and Stuart Murray. They were the two that failed to qualify out of Group A. And in Group B, well, Mark Lawson gave himself a reprieve with that tremendous last effort, and it was Russ Kirby and Frank Connolly that had to say goodbye. Right, now onto the silver dollar lift, and the world record in this event is 1,067 pounds. First up, Terry Hollands. And you could just see the strain of lifting that. Yes, it's a, it's a normal kind of deadlift done with a different stance. Terry keeps it going, he pulls it, he's a tall man, he has to put it a long way, but he makes that look quite easy. So next up, Dale Norris, a 400 kilogram effort from the big Welshman. Yep, not bad for a guy who says he can't grip. No, well within his kind of um, region, that. Dale's a big deadlifter, he's built for it. Huge weight, 400 kilo easy. Yes, Dale looks very good. I think he can go a long, long way. I would even tip him to win this event. Well, the Welshman into the lead. But Glenn Ross is up next, attempting 4.30 to put himself into the lead. So I guess the additional weight is getting thrown into those uh, silver boxes, basically. Yes, the bar itself weighs around about 300 kilo, and then we keep adding the weight into those big silver boxes at the end of the bar. 430 kilo, now in excess of 950 pounds. Huge weights. A huge weight, a huge challenge, but a huge man attempting that challenge. Glenn Ross looking around as if to say, is that it? And you just knew we were going to get a Who's Your Daddy after this. He made this look simple. Oh, he's just, he's the king of this event. 430 kilo, like picking up a bag of shopping. Excellent stuff. Yeah, there he goes, focused. See you later. And he's looking around as if to say, come on, make it tough. Yes, that was a popular result in Belfast, wasn't it? Dale Norris, the Welshman, looking to put Glenn Ross in the shade. 4.35. Is that a kilo too far for the Welshman? Getting psyched up. How much this is going to help him when he attempts this lift? Remains to be seen, 435 kilos. Think of picking up six normal-sized adults, three in each box, and you've got an idea of what Dale Norris is trying to achieve here. Yeah, Dale is, Dale is very good at deadlifting, as we said from the start, but this is a big surprise, going for the win. Come on, Dale. Well, he's giving it a go, he's giving it a go, and he can't quite get control. And his challenge collapses in a heap, but that was a gutsy effort. He was right on the limit. Yeah, 435 kilo is a massive weight. But I'm sure if he had another attempt, he'd get this. But you only give them a limited number, so he can't. That's an unfortunate event for Dill. Good effort. So close for the Welshman, but close not good enough. Terry Hollands back for more, going for 4.40. And Terry's taken one look at that and said, you know what, I think I'll leave that where it is. And that might have been a very smart move by Terry Hollands. Yeah, Terry playing the, the joker card there. He's let everybody else have a go. He knows what he's got to do. He's not going to give it everything. I did very well in the silver dollar. Uh, it suits me because I'm short, I have a strong back. I was very unlucky at the end, due to the balance. Can you talk me through some of the tactics involved? Because that's quite important, isn't it? I was hoping to beat Glenn. I knew Glenn was one of the strongest on this event. So by taking less lifts earlier on, if Glenn had missed it, I'd have won it anyway. So I had to go for the big lift. So I was unlucky. 
Um, can you can you tell me a little bit about how it how it works technically? Because um, how, how much um, how important it is using the straps? Without straps, you you won't move that type of weight. You, your hands can't aren't capable of holding that type of weight. Uh, and doing it in bare feet is that important? It gives an extra inch, so you lower it to the floor, you get a bit more uh, pull. Yeah, you and some of the blokes um, seem to be using um, smelling salts a lot. What, do, what does that do for you? Just clears your head and gets you mentally focused to the event. Well, the smelling salts were certainly working for Glenn Ross there. 430 kilograms on the silver dollar lift. Good effort, though, from Dale Norris in second place. But overall, it's the big Irishman opening up a gap between himself and the rest of the field. Can anyone catch Glenn Ross? Time's running out. We'll be back for the conclusion of the UK's Strongest Man after this.